we'll give everyone a few minutes to get situated here and get in. And then we'll go ahead and start in about a minute or two. How is everyone doing today, by the way? Having a great day so far? And just for everyone in here right now, um, we will be taking questions at the end. So uh, if you have any, just leave them in the chat and uh, we'll get to all of them time permitting. So I'd like to go ahead and get started, and I'd like to uh, say uh, good afternoon to everyone. Um, on behalf of both the Open Compute Project and PCS Corporation, I would like to welcome you to our collaborative webinar, uh, which is titled Vendor Neutrality and Open Source, Optimizing the Data Center Design Process. My name is Garrett Cutler. I'm the Marketing Specialist at PCX Corporation, and I will be your moderator today. Um, and with that said, let's go ahead and meet our panel of experts who you see on our screen today, and we'll take you through the basics of vendor neutrality and open sourcing and data center construction. Our first panelist today is the Director of Sales and Marketing at PCX, Rob Coyle, and he oversees the customer journey and removes friction from client problem-solving processes. Coyle has 10 years of in-depth, hands-on experience in the data center industry, um, and he also has experience selling electrical switch gear, emergency backup power systems, and avionic systems for commercial construction. And as part of the Open Compute Project, Coyle is the lead for data center facilities. Rob, how are you doing today? Good. Thanks for having me, Garrett. It's great, great to have you here. Our next panelist is the Vice President of Channel for the Open Compute Project. His name is Steve Helvey. And uh, Helvey strives and continually educates organizations on the benefits of open hardware designs and community-driven engineering for data centers. And he works closely with solution providers and manufacturers to help them implement the OCP tenets of openness, efficiency, impact, and scalability across all market segments. And Steve, how are you doing today, sir? Great, Garrett. Thank you. It's, it's great to have you here as well. And our final panelist and our newest panelist is the sub-project lead for the OCP Ready Facility Recognition Program, Mark Danzi. Danzi leads the development of the OCP Collocation Facility Guidelines for Deployment of Open Racks and has 37 years of experience in consultancy, project and program management, and cloud data center infrastructure. Danzi also speaks at OCP Data Center Facility Project Engineering Workshops and Data Center Events to raise awareness for the OCP and its tenants. And Mark, we're very glad to have you here today. How are you? I'm very good, thanks, and uh, thanks for having me along. Awesome. It's great to have you here. And uh, now that you guys have uh, learned about our panel uh, from PCX and the Open Compute Project, I'd like to go ahead and uh, dive right into vendor neutrality and open sourcing as it relates to data center design and construction processes. So uh, what is open source? And uh, just to give you everyone an idea of what this is, um, open source hardware designs are those made widely, I'm sorry about that, uh, Wrong slide. A construction design and implementation approach wherein a data center ensures data center design ensures more encompassing compatibility, utilizing more open sourcing of components and infrastructure while being optimized for interoperability. And uh, vendor neutrality ensures that there is no vendor lock in uh, and a wider variety of infrastructure components from multiple sources to fit the customer specification while maximizing performance, cutting costs, and standardizing designs for your data center project. And open source is uh, open source hardware designs are those made widely available to the public so that organizations can utilize them, contribute to them, and create products or solutions based on these designs. Uh, and these particular designs are created to integrate easily accessible and widely sourced components to make the construction process that much easier for organizations to build their data centers. Um, and this is synonymous with data center and construction innovation. Innovation and open source go hand in hand. 
And uh, this goes hand in hand with optimization and price points, scalability, efficiency, flexibility, and project collaboration, which are key tenants of the Open Compute project. And uh, speaking of the Open Compute project, it is a global community driving this initiative, and uh, they look to mitigate proprietary vendor locked infrastructure while bringing together industry leaders and organizations to collaborate on designs and solutions. So before we get into our panel of questions here, um, I just want to preface this by saying that we have divided each of these question segments into the three levels of impact. And uh, these impacts uh, have, uh, have an effect on the client, the supplier, and the contractor, which are all key contributors to data center construction. So our first question segment is vendor neutrality and the client. And, uh, it is no secret that vendor neutrality is synonymous with client flexibility in the data center design process. And uh, Rob, I'm gonna go ahead and kick things off with you. Um, I wanna ask you, how does this flexibility benefit the client's future data center efficiency and price margins? Having vendor neutrality in your supply chain just allows for maximum flexibility, right? You talked about uh, vendor lock-in and restriction around a certain supplier. Um, having the ability to you know, use best in breed solutions or being able to make a change uh, during the construction process or the development of a data center. It just, just gives the client a lot of flexibility. And Rob, what examples can you provide uh, from PCX and your experience uh, with clients to drive these points home? You know, in the design phase of a, of a project, we recently um, deployed a modular data center solution um, that had a, a certain vendor for a UPS solution. And um, we worked to have a, um, a solution that was vendor agnostic so that it could be changed for different UPS vendors. So based on uh, the lead time or the budget, um, you know, the client's able to select uh, different vendors to meet the same application um, and just allows the design to um, have a longer life as well. They don't have to go back to the drawing board every time they want to make a minor change. And uh, Mark, uh, what other examples from the OCP's perspective uh, can you give to drive these points home? Yes, I think um, this agnostic approach um, it really helps you know, with the design process, um, having a sort of standardized components, uh, open source design components, um, such as the MDC. Helps with um, you know creating you know energy efficiency you know sort of optimizing the facility um, you know it can help we can see faster build time is being available and also faster commissioning as well um, and then once the uh, once it's uh, <coughs> up and running and live then the, you know we've also seen a low lower operational costs. Steve, do you have anything to add to that as well? Yeah, the 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 hardware inside um the the data center itself has a lot to do with the open designs and the efficiencies that you get there i'm mean, one thing that you'll hear pervasively across the open community is this uh, passion for simplicity so the way that the open compute designs are is you you'll the way the rack is designed you can get, make them 25 percent more dense um the way the air flows around the hardware makes it up to 30 to 50 percent more efficient um, all of these adding to those those margins that are so valuable in in a very competitive uh, hosting or co-location or data center market and we all know that vendor neutrality is uh in industry terms the direct antithesis of vendor lock-in and uh you know with this in mind Rob, could you define vendor lock-in for the audience and speak to how a vendor agnostic or neutral approach goes beyond initial sourcing of components and benefits the end client? Yeah, often we see uh, vendor lock-in occur when, um, from our perspective as an integrator, that an integrated solution is designed around you know, one specific product. And for that vendor, they may have a, a suite of products that work together, but only work with their own a particular brand or particular protocols. And so by, by selecting that and starting with that one particular vendor, um, you may lose your ability to um, easily change um, certain components or, or make a, 
um, a decision that um, you know, may impact the cost or the lead time or performance characteristics. So sometimes when you start with one vendor, you're stuck with that vendor to some, to some extent. Hey Steve, uh, what can you add to that uh, on the OCP side of things? Uh, how, how do you see a lot of clients or, or maybe organizations that come to you and talk to you about, your, about their clients? What benefits do they see utilizing this approach? Yeah, well, vendor lock-in is one of the key topics uh, that we hear from a lot of the companies, and, and it's it's across every aspect of our life. It's simply a way that companies dictate their loyalty by making their customers um, more sticky, and that's that's okay um, in in some areas. But in the in the world of hardware, um, you'll have hardware vendors that have bundled their proprietary hardware with their proprietary software, and that limits flexibility. Uh, it limits use cases. And if you're a customer, what you're trying to do is you're trying to be more flexible and you're trying to have more options. And so the open source world or the open source software world has been very, um, has been, has really been the catalyst in changing this whole model. So with advances in software defined infrastructures, you're now able to disaggregate that software from the hardware. And now you're not as focused at running proprietary branded hardware you can have a lot more flexibility breaking apart the software running the software that you want with the types of commodity based hardware and this is all being driven by open source communities both at the open source software and open source hardware and mark what can you add to that on the ocp side that uh, steve mentioned a lot of the proprietary nature of this you know what have you guys on your end seen uh, to make this process more efficient for the client well, I think it's 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 definitely about giving the clients sort of um, you know more flexibility uh, flexibility um, helping them to be not constrained by product availability uh, by OCP helping to create um, a supply chain uh, where a client can use multiple sources for their products um, and. Uh, we're seeing, you know, situations where, say, say a gaming company um, needs to, you know, deploy some more compute really quickly because they're launching a game, and uh, having an open source uh, supply chain where that client could then go to multiple sources to find the, the same products that they're familiar with. You know, they can provide their, you know, additional capacity really quickly. Um, and so it's about not constraining the customer, giving them, uh, giving that ability to deliver their services when when they need to deliver them to their customers. So uh, it's uh, definitely very beneficial to the client. So moving on, uh, and thank you again, guys, for those responses. Uh, just to take us through vendor neutrality and kind of the basics of how it goes for the client. Um, and Mark, I wanted to go ahead and and, uh, and keep with you and ask you, you know, how has vendor neutrality been affected by open sourcing and collaboration? You know, what have what has the OCP and OCP members done to emphasize the need for this and inter and to benefit interoperability and to help clients remove friction from their data center purchases? Sure. Well, I mean, within the OCP community, we have um, a number of projects that uh, our vendors openly collaborate within. Uh, so we've got vendors um, who are supplying similar products where maybe in the past they worked in their own silos, but now they work uh, together collaboratively uh, because they know that they can uh, you know, produce products you know, faster, cheaper, better uh, by creating these open source designs. And we're seeing this you know, across, across the whole uh, realm of different products um, that uh, cloud infrastructure needs from servers, open network switches, and, and MDCs as well that are designed to be interoperable and to uh, and to be backward compatible as well. It's really important that that's the case. You know, we don't want to have um, you know have products that um, are going to constrain the client in that way. Um, so it's yeah, this helps remove the friction. The clients can be assured that products will work together uh, if they're purchased from different vendors, if they're using the same um, open source designs. Um, again, creates great flexibility, 
flexibility removes friction. So uh, I think you know OCP has been really successful in 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 that. Steve, have you seen a bit of the same? And what examples can you provide to give context to what Mark was talking about as far as you know flexibility and removing friction? Yeah, there, uh, Garrett. When keep in mind that most of the most of this is driven at the customer level. So when customers are involved in an open source community, they are helping mutually design what requirements they want in their next version or what they need moving forward. So as soon as the customers start to dictate what requirements they have, then you start to see these vendors need to match these requirements and open up their designs because most of these customers and most customers in general want a dual source, dual sourcing strategy. So in this open source environment, these end customers are working together with vendors to create this roadmap or this product or solution that they want. And it's really pulling these vendors to make sure that they work well in, uh, with interoperability, with ensuring that the roadmap aligns well, and to be that first or second or third vendor of choice. And we have really two or three projects that come to mind. One is open systems firmware. So in the past, hardware firmware has been very, very proprietary. There's a project within open compute to have it open. So an open source firmware or an open systems firmware. And that's going to be at the design phase. So the end customer has really instructed the designers or the developers and the manufacturers of this hardware to, if you're gonna make this for us, it has to have open systems firmware so that we can get in there and make sure it's secure. And then that's going to be um, a, a requirement across all server products coming through OCP. And then the same would be around our, um, our open infrastructure and accelerator project. So the GPU side of things, uh, creating a GPU accelerator module takes a lot of time. So there's a project with an open compute that has um, set out the baseline specifications that allows multiple manufacturers to meet those requirements quickly and so that everyone gets to market faster. And Steve, thank you for uh, for delving into that. And I was gonna ask you, Rob, as well, you know, you have ex experience both uh, as an OCP lead and uh, on, on PCX as on the sales side, you know, what can you add to this and, uh, and talk us through kind of the client's uh, mindset? Well, I, and Steve uncovered a lot of things. I heard I heard Mark say removal of friction, which we're, we're a firm believer in. And Steve had a couple great examples of really connecting the the customer to the vendor. And as opposed to playing this traditional like cat and mouse game of I have a product, there's a there's a need in the marketplace, and everybody kind of comes up with their own way of of tackling that. It's a much more efficient direct path to answering you know what the needs are in the marketplace. And we did that with the modular data center specification, and that was all driven by. Um, you know, client surveys and interaction with the end users of what they thought their needs were going to be in the coming years. And so we targeted directly what they were asking for, as opposed to, you know, the influences that come within companies of, oh, this is what we're good at building. Well, okay, that, that's great, but what does it actually do? What's the impact of it in the marketplace? And being part of open compute really allows us to have a much tighter connection to the customer and the end user and create a broader impact. And just for yeah. a little bit of context, when we go through um, we're working through these concepts with a client, we start at vendor agnosticism, right? We start being vendor neutral. PCX has always been that way. It's another level to go open. And if a client has interest in going open, not only do they have a, a broader um, selection of vendors for each of their components and hardware, is they don't have to make any compromises from performance. And being vendor neutral is great because I can put one product in the place of another one. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they meet the same product requirements or costs. But when you create a baseline and an open platform, they're all meeting the same standards. And then there's no compromises when you have to make a, a selection. And you talk a bit about making a selection. And I know, you know, when organizations are going to, you know, purchase or, or, or build a data center, um, scalability comes to mind especially with growth and organizational growth that we see, um, you know, and in reference to this approach, uh, you know, with added capacity and interoperability also playing a role, you know, how does this approach support these initiatives? Rob? Yeah, with, I mean, with scalability, I think we saw a lot of good examples just in this last year, right, where 
um, you know, infrastructure became further distributed. Uh, the demand was, um, you know, brought on. It was unprecedented the amount of demand that was needed to deploy new hardware to support services, um, all the way through the IT stack from the edge to the core. Um, the supply chain was really constrained at times in the last year, and if if uh, certain clients or certain end users were in, you know, a vendor lock-in situation, you know, there was there was pain felt there, either by lead times or uh, expediting costs, having the ability to be flexible on who can support you know, your business goals is a, is a massive advantage. And I, I think we're going to see, you know, hopefully not another pandemic for a long time, but there will be unforeseen circumstances that will drive IT demand. And I think the companies that have the most flexibility will have the advantage going forward. And Mark and Steve, just on the OCP side, we know that Scalability is a huge tenant uh, that OCP is constantly pushing. You know, what can you add to that in context of uh, the vendor neutral approach? Well, there's uh, yeah. there's the scalability on the on the infrastructure side, but also on the the way that I view scalability is also on the people and the resources side. So if I break down scalability into two areas, one is if I have a set core number of internal people or resources, let's say five engineers, how do I allocate their time? some on public cloud, some on the private stuff that I'm doing, some on application development. Being part of an open source community, I can now extend those resources. So now I've got five people, but I have access and a community of 8,000 engineers that I can draw on best practices and then get time to market for those five resources. And then once I get the gear and hardware and I put it in my data center, how easy is it to maintain? And that's another great thing about open compute is that the way that we have simplified the designs around being open and toolless, uh, you can really maximize your resources in the technician to server ratio that optimizes that. And you can really scale out. Uh, we have one particular end user, uh, Yahoo Japan, that only has two or three people looking after seven plus thousand servers. Uh, that's how simplified the designs are. Yeah, and I think also that, um you know, scalability being one of our tenants, it, it's it's all about designing for large scale deployments. It's really important in the designs are allowing for that. Um, and, you know, having um, designs such as the, uh, like the 300 kilowatt MDC designs, open source design that's been created uh, within the DCF project um, and the MDC. Um, is for a scale out situation we'll be able to add modules uh, together um, as the client needs to expand um, or you know or has resources that you know that, that um, may be limited uh, in the first place but then further on they can add uh, other modules um, so scalability yeah, again really important tenant within OCP. And moving on from the client to the supplier, um, Steve, I wanted to start with you. How how is vendor analysis and vendor neutrality make component sourcing easier for suppliers? And uh, what intrinsic benefits did this approach help ensure specifications are met? In, um, I think you need to look at the way that the business model is set up here and what's happened over the last few years. So in the past, if I wanted some some hardware, I would need to pick up my re, uh, the phone and call my reseller and get a an OEM or a traditional branded hardware. But people are becoming more and more comfortable buying direct from the manufacturer for these components that have been open sourced. Um, IDC tracks server shipments and server revenue on a quarterly basis, and they have a category called ODM Direct. And ODM Direct stands for design manufacturer, so direct from the manufacturer, direct to the customer. Those are customers buying direct from the manufacturer. And that growth is consistently well up in the 40 to 50% quarter over quarter and year over year. So companies are becoming more comfortable buying direct from the manufacturer because most of these companies are open sourcing their designs. Now, what this then allows you to do is that if I'm, if I'm an end customer, Let's say that I have significant buying power and I have 
my ability to buy direct from the manufacturer. I can grab that those modular components based on my supply chain, based on my region, based on the ROI associated with that. Or maybe I have one partner that does the entire integration. I can still manage those supply components much, much more effectively if it's modular and broken apart rather than, say, a, a, a vendor-heavy proprietary reliant on one supplier. And Rob and Mark, uh, when, he's, when he's talking a lot about you know proprietary notions uh, when building a data center and using vendor agnosticism, what can you add to that? And you know, what intrinsic benefits are we seeing with this approach? I think from you know we act as a supplier often, right? And not always. Our, our scope varies based on the projects, but you know all those benefits that that Steve presented on on the business model side. You know, translates to our ability to deliver for our customers right if i if i have the right access you know i, I made a promise to my client right they, they've asked for some sort of performance requirement they've asked for a product uh, they've asked for a solution to their business problem if i've selected sources of modular components within whatever my deliverable is I have to be able to deliver on that. You know, I'm I'm the one that stand to make that promise, and ultimately the end users' you know, business suffers if I can't meet those requirements. So having the supply chain flexibility of being able to um, reach out to you know multiple manufacturers, and you know it's it's not uncommon for us to have an OEM relationship, um, but to have our clients have a tighter connection to OEM is, is also beneficial. I mean, and also adding to that, um, I mean, by purchasing products that have been that are based on OC, OCP open source design requirements, and we, you know, which have predetermined specifications built into them, so you know what you're going to get um, when you purchase <laughs> from these different suppliers. I think that's having the confidence to know you're going to get similar components. You can buy from different suppliers that will all fit together. Um, uh, for example, I mean racks, um, the open open rack uh, version two. You can have a strengthening kit um, added to it to allow for you know, you know earthquake effects, uh, maybe in you know, in certain areas, um, California being one, of course. And um, yeah, knowing that that you know an open source rack uh, design um, allows for you to add a that kit and that kit could be you know, added to different racks from different suppliers. You know, again, gives you that flexibility and uh, must help the supplier with um, you know, delivering uh, their products on time. And Mark, it's interesting you bring up uh, specific components that uh, individuals are using in their data centers, and when when they're building it, uh, you know they're they're given these intrinsic benefits, and and it's kind of on display. And this kind of brings us into our next question here. And Rob, I'd like to have you kind of uh, maybe elaborate a bit on what you said earlier about supply chains. And I know we talked about, you know, how these, how these have been affected by the vendor agnostic approach. You know, how is open sourcing and collaboration with other member companies with the OCP added to this? Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, uniquely being modular as a company in, in the data center space, um, I'd say the, the biggest problem with modular is that we stood in silos for so many years. Right, that these these designs had no we had no platform really to discuss about well why did you design it that way or what customers like this and modular is still so relatively new in the data center space that um, we haven't had as, as many interactions with all the customers that our you know our our co competitors I guess have and so when we get to share those challenges and you know client needs. Then the product can become a lot better. So, you know, as Mark mentioned, like the strengthening kit for for racks, right? That that's a well-developed solution. I would love to see a collaboration with another member um, in the modular data center uh, subproject. You know, come up with a open source application of an improvement that could be applied to a modular data center. You know, maybe it has something to do with cooling. Maybe it has something to do with um, you know the adaptability of some of the hardware. Um, I'd love to see universal uh, applicable kits for any OCP you know, approved design. That would be, that'd be a great advantage 
um, for us because we could meet a client's needs, you know, specific as they are. Hmm. Steve and Mark, uh, speaking of these kits, is there anything you guys can add uh, on that topic? Well, on the just on the supply chain in, in general, the one the one thing that I've noticed a lot over the past year, as I talk with partners and, and end users, they it's just becoming increasingly important to forecast appropriately. Um, as you are working with some of these open source designs, maybe they're not already uh, they need maybe need a little bit more lead time on some components versus others. So forecasting is pretty pretty important on the seismic kit itself. Um, that was contributed, I believe, by Nokia. Is that right, Mark? Initially, um, I think I've, I've certainly seen Rital. Um, oh, Rital. Okay. Right in right in the early day early days of the Open Rack design, um, certainly Rital were involved with that, and they did a lot of testing um, of um, yeah vibration in in their lab. So yeah, Rital done a lot in that area. And we've even had a, a even more uh, as the edge becomes more prevalent, uh, Garrett and Rob. I think that we'll have a lot more discussions around these type of kits. Uh, I know that uh, in one of our recent project meetings, there was a gentleman talking about a new railway system that they're going to be using some edge devices, and they were talking about the vibration associated uh, that happens alongside the tracks. And uh, same way with um, a few companies here in Europe that are more in the um, say the public sector with some aero defense and some some uh, military use cases as well. Yeah, I think these, um, these use cases are, are developing. Um, recently, um, we heard from one of the uh, you know, telco suppliers that uh, they're going to they're looking for for help around designing uh, modules for uh, base stations, um, smaller modules um, for specific uses, and uh, such as you know five G rollouts. Um, so yeah, as the as the technology develops, um, yeah, designs will needed to be developed for that, and uh, and five G is going to be big, and <laughs> it's uh, we're going to need a lot of suppliers. So uh, having having them get involved and uh, with with OCP would mean that they're you know they're in they're in the game and uh, you know can add, join join the uh, join the supply chain. Yeah. I will, one piece to add on the on the supply chain, and really Steve pointed out earlier that when we we're talking about scalability, is that still I'm stuck in some of the old business model ways of like, you know, how much of something can we build or sell or you know, but you know, when you talk about resources within the community, as 5G rolls out and these applications become new and smaller, it's not just you know a, a single component manufacturer that has to solve these problems. You know, you have you have areas of of cooling and connectors and structural manufacturers and uh, chip manufacturers and, and they all have to collaborate and work on some end user solution by by community sourcing that I, I think you can just get so much more done in such a shorter period of time um, compared to you know a single company as if we were stuck on the old model of going to you know maybe a couple of our internal vendors and showing them something new for the first time, and then they have to review it for the first time, and then maybe they have a couple sub vendors that they're showing some change to, and trying to bring that all back together for one goal um, is very challenging. Uh, compared to the community model, uh, the community model just has so much more input. It all happens in parallel processes, and it, it compresses the schedule to, for a solution by a lot. And moving on with uh, vendor neutrality and its effect on the supplier, um, and Rob, I'd like to continue with you. How does a supplier ensure create a comprehensive vendor network? Yeah, I mean the the OCP marketplace um, is really the home for you know that that vendor network, right? So when when something is approved and it, it's added to the marketplace, you know it, that's that's the resource center. Um, and clients can go there and look at all the offerings. Um, integrators of components can go there, um, and you know it's having that that baseline of approval, having the standard there, the specification that has to meet. Um, you can be confident 
in selecting that. You can show that to your clients, the end user, that this is, you know, these are the characteristics of what we're looking at. Um, you know, it's a, I wish I had more to say about it, but it's just so simple and so easy and standard um, that that's what makes it great. And Steve, Rob brought up uh, OCP membership and the marketplace playing a huge uh, role in a vendor comprehensive network. Um, can you add a little bit to this and you know maybe take our uh, viewers through a little bit about what that marketplace does and, and what it does uh, for organizations that are OCP community members? The, the OCP marketplace is the, uh, the area where uh, companies who have uh, created or manufactured components that meet opens, opens uh, OCP specifications can list their products. So every product you see on our marketplace, it meets a current specification. So the idea, the best operating model is that if, if I um, uh, have a specification, there may be multiple suppliers making something and manufacturing something off of that one particular specification. So those are all available on our marketplace. And this has been a maturation of, of OCP because when we first started out, there was no marketplace. So we would have specifications and then it would be almost like a library where I could take a look at it, but where do I go buy it? Uh, so we have a, a, um, a requirement in place where if you're going to contribute a specification into open compute, you must have a supplier, at least one, ready to go within 120 days. So that ensures people that when they look at a, a, a specification or a product on our site, they know that it's been through the specification review cycle, through a technical steering committee, as well as a, a confirmation that the product does meet that particular specification. So a lot of work has gone into um, the brands that you see, uh, and the process behind that. And it's really great. We're getting a little over 10 or 11,000 visitors per month to the marketplace and it continues to grow, um, especially with the integrated solutions. So one thing that I do get excited about is the work that PCX has done looking vertically across the entire ecosystem. So not just a standalone modular data center, but partnering with the other component providers and the other members to create that holistic modular data center, which is available on our marketplace for if you wanna take a deeper look. But it's great the way that uh, the community itself can expand your network to create this entire solution where you're thinking, as Robert mentioned earlier, you're thinking holistically and not just, here's my little section of the world let me go talk to one customer. Let me see what a, uh, thing, things I can add in the next version. But you're getting a whole view across the ecosystem of what, what servers are coming, what types of technologies are going to be implemented, both storage or networking, and how to implement those into your final product. And Mark, uh, I know you talked uh, earlier about uh, specific components and everything, and I do want to revisit um, OCP and PCX's relationship uh, and the experience that we've had uh, moving forward, but before we get to that, Mark, um, I wanted to ask you, you know, with so many components to source and power distribution, cooling, UPS, fire suppression, and more, you know, how does the sheer amount of choice in component sourcing affect lead times, especially with the OCP marketplace in play? I think um, with, um, you know, companies just having one choice of supplier, um, OCP have mitigated this um, so that, um, you know, there's, you know, just again, you know, we talked about multi-source. <laughs> um, this is what we're trying to help. We're trying to help, um, you know, suppliers, vendors, clients with not being constrained. Um, and, and also what we'd like to see is that, um, you know, the products, um, you know, don't have, you know, sort of an end, end of life. Um, so you know a redesign is necessary um in the product uh, you know say in, in an mdc um you know, so, you know you can have a situation where you know you've a product say you know it could be a ups for instance has been used on a on, on for one project and then and then do you want to go ahead and and you know create the same again in a, a new project but that ups has gone end of life um and therefore you can't use it and then you've got to redesign it. Um, so having having the flexibility in the design where you could then choose another UPS model 
that will fit straight in there. Um, and and again, as I say, not be constrained. Um, I think is really uh, is really important. Um, and I think this uh, this agnostic approach can can help uh, you know mitigate these challenges that um, you know suppliers, vendors, and clients have. And Rob, you know, what examples on the BCX and OCP side of this uh, have you experienced, and you know, what can you point to that accredits this? Well, I, I think Mark touched on a key point about the life cycle of a product, right? And we, in in previous conversations I've had with Mark, is that you know, the, the end of a life cycle might be determined by the manufacturer, not because it doesn't have useful life anymore. And using a, a this approach, um, really, the, the life cycle of the product is determined by its usability and not by some outside factor you know a, a software factor where it's no longer supported anymore or a serviceability factor by the vendor that it's no longer supported anymore um, and that really contributes to the you know the sustainability efforts of the open compute project and pcx interest in the open compute project and and you know frankly our, our clients interest in this approach you know our biggest clients are you know have massive sustainability initiatives uh, these are ways that you know they can enable them to reach those sustainability initiatives and it's not just on um, you know power usage and performance it's also on you know the products and the, the uh, cost um, and I, I mean environmental cost to manufacture these components and put them in their facilities these are all areas that are becoming increasingly important so the supply chain is getting more you know more visibility than it ever has before and you know, doing it the way it's been done for a long time is not going to be good enough anymore. Yeah. Steve, what what examples can you uh, point to in your experience and the OCP's experience? I know that um, I can speak to a couple specific customers that have just had. Uh, I, I asked them, why why are you doing this? And the first answer they always come back with is, well, it's the workload they're doing but then they quickly realize that they can they can drop upwards between 20 to 25 percent on the capex alone just by moving toward open source designs and so the number one reason that people end up doing this is a capex and that's those are across the components that that mark and rob have mentioned uh rakuten you know, a very large e-commerce company based out of japan with a very large presence uh, now worldwide they've moved pretty much to an entire open infrastructure model across their network. And they're seeing a 40% reduction in CapEx and over a 50 or 60% reduction in hardware cost just by moving to open, open designs. And so if anybody's interested, you can type in Rakuten um, CTO presentation on YouTube and you will probably come up with his description of how they've moved to an open architecture. So those are the real numbers that that drive all this open source everything else is great but at the end of the day when people talk about why move to open source it's capex it's opex um, those are the key key reasons you know as we move on from the supplier to the contractor um, i wanted to ask you mark you know how does a vendor agnostic approach influence the contractor's role in the data center design and construction process Okay, so yeah, so if a yeah, client goes down the agnostic solution route um, from a vendor, I think um, it really can be uh, a beneficial thing for the contractor, <clears throat> especially if they're, you know, they're familiar with the design, they're familiar with the build, they know the components that they're gonna be <laughs> needing to, to, to maybe fit out for a sort of, uh, for a build to suit. Um, so, once they're familiar, that means that they can optimize the build process. Um, they can commission it faster. It results in lower costs, and and it's it's going to mean that those project timelines are going to be achieved. Um, so, yeah, having this standardization, I think, really helps both the project but also the work of the contractor. Um, yeah. And I know we talked earlier about the impact open sourcing and vendor neutrality slash agnosticism have on price and performance. Rob, how do these factors influence the contractor's input and their guidance of a data center construction project? Yeah, as, as Steve pointed out, you know, the, there's the CapEx perspective, but there's also, you know, 
part of that is is the efficiency in operation, right? And and construction of something. Do we equate it like if you've ever changed the brakes on your on your own car? The first one takes you like a certain amount of time, but then when you go to the other side of the car, it goes a lot faster because you've seen it all before, right? And so we meet a lot of people who have the same value, the same thing. So replica, you know, being able to replicate and use the same thing over and over and standardize and simplify things, make it go faster. So if you've seen one OCP piece of hardware and just because it's provided by another vendor, it, it's going to look the same, at least very similar. So the ability to deploy it, maintain it, um, is just going to be so much faster and easier. Uh, you're not worried about um, specialty hardware or something that's you know proprietary in nature. Now, those are all things that slow down contractors and installers. And they may be great for the manufacturer of that component. And you know, in some circumstances, it may be beneficial for even the end user. But when you think about the full ecosystem and the full life cycle of of getting a product from manufactured and actually getting it in the field and using it, you have to consider what it takes to get it out there and get it landed in your facility. And using a standardized approach is, is always gonna make it faster. We we see you know, big data center companies, right? We talk about scalability and we see it at the hyperscale level. Uh, they want it standardized too. I mean, they're looking for entire sections of buildings to be, you know, have a skew. They want to order one and get it placed. I and mean, it's just like a PC's built, right? It's all it's all the same mentality. When I just want to swap one piece out because it changes, I want to be able to put it back in. I mean, that's going all the way to the to the building scale. And so yeah, you're right, Rob. Because there's there's other companies out there that are sitting on a ton of applications and they're looking at these hyperscalers going, wow, if I can just have five or six rack configurations and that's my infrastructure, I can really scale that out. But you're you're talking about some enterprises sitting on tens of thousands of applications and, and that all equates to a different rack type when you're deploying it. So there's a there's a crunch on the software side to get those down into manageable rack configurations. Well, yeah, it, it's what's nice is, you know, we see the hyperscale side, but kind of the Steve's point, I don't know the software side as much. We're definitely more physical infrastructure is that it's scalable from one rack all the way up. You know, the advantages may not be as great if you're not deploying it so big, but you know, a small enterprise user can take the advantage of what the hyperscalers are driving for and deploy it in their own, you know, much smaller facilities. And we do know that, uh, and this has been proven by the end users who have adopted OCP, is you can get the same type of benefits using three racks as you can 30 or 300. Of course, the CapEx components might be slightly different because of the buying power and the scale and, and, the, and the volume, but the efficiencies, the OPEX, all of those other components um, are, and all those other benefits translate regardless of scale of deployment. And Steve, you know, going, going uh, forward with that point, you know, and talking about open sourcing and vendor analysis, I mean, you know, how does it impact daily operations and the day-to-day -day influence that a contractor has on construction or the design process? You know, what, what have we seen that's been streamlined in this case and how has it benefited the client? Because I know we've we've talked this whole time, you know, the three levels of impact. We have the client, the supplier, and the contractor. But really, it's just cyclical in nature. You know, we're 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 all impacting. They're all impacting one another. You know, so where where does this fall? You know, how has it been streamlined? Yeah, Mark would be great at, at talking about this as well. It was part of the guidelines that his team and the the DC uh, data center facilities project to put together, uh, helping designers and um, data center operators understand what it takes to deploy open compute designs through a set of guidelines that then are, they can actually then do a self-assessment according to those guidelines. Um, and it, it helps them through the process. So Mark, maybe you can speak a little bit more about those type of guidelines and how it accelerates the contractor's efforts. Yeah, I mean, I mean one of the things that we do, you know, within OCP is, is, you know, is create this awareness. Um, um, trying to create um, <clears throat> this sort of this you know share the knowledge uh, share the knowledge widely and within the uh, within the guidelines uh, we've broken it down into the different um, the subsystem requirements the fundamental facility requirements um, for for a colo facility well that's 
yeah, it's exactly the sorts of facility requirements that are needed uh, within an MDC as well, um, just on a larger scale. Um, so, you know, by, you know, bringing together, you know, members within the OCP community with uh, a broad range of skill sets from not only uh, we've got vendors, we've got consultants, architects, engineers, you know, they, they've all got their own story to tell, their own perspective um, on creating the solution. So we've had a, you know, we've input across the range of, of different disciplines uh, coming together to uh, to help, you know, raise this awareness and um, and ultimately, you know, from a you know from a contractor's perspective, you know, helps them deliver their um, their services, um, you know, through you know, through OCP's uh, support. Thank you for that insight, Mark. And it, and it does it does help to kind of give us a guideline of you know how this process works and who is affected by this. Um, you know, Rob, based on your experience with BCX's operations, you know what what's your experience and you know what have we streamlined and how this how has vendor agnosticism and open sourcing benefited the client? Well, I, I mentioned at the very start of this call that you know vendor agnostic and having the flexibility you know to maybe change. Um, a vendor from the supply chain is important. But if you elevate it to a way and go full open, um, the standardization means that we're no longer designing for worst case scenario, right? So if you've ever designed, ever gone through a facility design and there's a concept very early on, you know, we draw on very big boxes. Well, the electrical room is gonna be here and it needs to hold about this much of equipment. If we start from the front and knowing that we're using a standard design, we're not overbuilding for possibilities, we're building for exactly what's needed. So, you know, the cost comes way down. Um, when Mark works with um, the OCP Ready Foundation, we're creating a, a baseline of these are what the requirements, you know, this is these are the worst case scenario requirements and what they will be. So you have to meet these. That's a much tighter tolerance than how other facilities are designed. And it's just a much more efficient approach. Stephen, Mark, did you have anything to add uh, to that before we move on? Um, no, I, I think we, I think we pretty much covered that, uh, that mm -hmm. subject. I appreciate the insight, and uh, this this really does help uh, when talking about the construction process, especially in the data center uh, projects, like span, and it makes it does remove friction, as we say. Um, but I would like to move on to take uh, a couple audience questions. Um, and just to remind everyone that um, if you do have a question, uh, you can leave it in the chat and uh, time permitting, we can answer it. Um, but our first question, gentlemen, is from uh, Raul Alvarez. Uh, and he asks, uh, he actually told us that this was a great discussion on how to create open source and vendor nice designs to avoid vendor lock-in. Um, but he asks, what about tools used? Is there an effort over there to promote open source data center design tools and avoid the lender lock-in in, in that space as well. And we'll kind of just go around Robin here. I certainly, I mean, I'll, I'll just quickly go first on this. Um, there's certainly, uh, you know, we've got open source components like uh, FreeCAD. Uh, it's a software component that's been uh, uh, recently contributed, um, and that's being used for um, a. Uh, um, possible new MDC design um, using more sustainable materials, um, say wood as an example, um, and they're using this free CAD software um, to uh, to develop um, a, a concept. So that's an example of um, yeah of that type of uh, application being used um, in an open source way. I don't know if I've seen it, but Steve or Mark, have you guys seen any vendors using like open source hardware, like from uh, estimating uh, calculators or anything like that? Are there other vendors using that? I I have not. Mark, have you? No, no, I haven't. No. Um, the uh, the only other example that we've had is around um, rack management. Um, Using uh, uh, this sort of software with uh, with Raspberry Pis, uh, having Raspberry Pis uh, added to racks, and then being able to monitor the environmental conditions of, of individual racks, um, 
on a sort of on a data center on a regional and and um, on a countrywide scale uh, by one of our um, host bee members so uh, yeah, yeah that's um that's one other example that um, that I've come across yeah maybe this is something we can look into with um getting some of these other software estimating software vendors to participate a bit more mm. yeah i think i think it would be an easy platform I, we'd certainly be part of it is you know everybody can use it if you're if you're supplying an ocp hardware and it meets a certain requirement if if everybody's you know designing the same standard it's a tool that if you support ocp hardware or your manufacturer of an ocp component it would be a, you know a shared tool it'd be great all around yeah agreed it's a good question bro yeah great one and thank you again for your question um i'd just like to say to uh, all of our attendees that um, if you do have any other questions related to vendor agnosticism open sourcing or anything related to pcx offerings or ocp uh, marketplace or offerings please do not hesitate to contact me um, directly at my email, it is garrett.cutler at pcxcorp.com. That is G-A-R-R-E-T dot C-U-T-L-E-R at pcxcorp.com. And uh, I will make sure that I forward it to the right uh, expert uh, able to answer as quickly and rapidly as possible. And before we end the webinar, I would just like to go ahead and give everyone a little bit of insight into our newest content offer. That is the Guide to Open Collaboration and Vendor Agnosticism in Data Centers. It will cover it will cover more in depth a lot of the topics that we have here today. And uh, I would just like to uh, say that if you'd like to more learn more about these topics, uh, it will be live on the PCX Resource Center as well, um, and we can. Uh, help give you a little bit of insight into open sourcing initiatives and how PCX's vendor agnostic approach in conjunction with open sourcing from the OCP, uh, the Open Compute Project, uh, can help expedite your build schedules, provide you with flexibility your organization needs, and we can help you optimize your next data center's capabilities. And uh, again, visit the PCX Resource Center to download that new ebook today. Um, and I would just like to say to our panelists, thank you again uh, for being here and uh, giving us insight into vendor neutrality and open sourcing. Mark, Rob, and Steve, thank you very much. Um, and I'd like to thank all of our attendees for attending our webinar. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. And uh, we'll be hearing from you shortly, and you'll be hearing from us as well. Thanks, Thanks Garrett. Everyone. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. I guess that might be work clear.